Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mint. The other day, Linux Mint came out with a new ISO that's based on Debian 13. And today, I'm going to show you how to download it, verify it, and make a USB thumb drive, a bootable USB thumb drive, so you can install it on your computer. And I'm going to do it all in Windows 10. So, let's get to it. So as you can see, I'm in Windows 10. And just as a side note, I'm going to open up settings, update and security. And as you can see, my Windows 10 system is up to date as of 640 this morning. And my PC is enrolled to get extended security updates until October 2026. And I didn't pay for it. And I didn't do anything illegal. All I had to do was sign into my Microsoft account with my username and my password and I was able to get a year of extended security updates. And I'm only telling you that because perhaps you're not ready to move to Linux yet. And if you're not ready to switch and you don't want to buy a new computer that has Windows 11 in it and you're not ready to switch to Linux, you have another year. That's all. But if you are ready to switch, like I said, I'm going to show you how to download Linux Mint ISO in Windows 10, how to verify it, and how to make a USB thumb drive. So I'm going to close this, and I'm not going to use Microsoft Edge. Ugh. I have Firefox installed, so let's click it on. And now we're in Firefox, and I'm going to type in Linux Mint. And we're going to go here to the home page of Linux Mint. So just quickly and briefly, because I made a lot of videos about this already, Linux Mint has four ISOs that you can download. Three of them are based on Ubuntu, and one of them is based on Debian, and this time it's Debian 13. So, if you click on Download, and click on here, there's Linux Mint 22.2 Zara, and it's based on Ubuntu, and there's three editions. There's one based on the Cinnamon Edition, one based on XFCE Edition, and one based on Mate. But I'm not going to download any of those today. Now they have a fourth ISO. So if you hover over download and go right here, it's here it is here. LMDE7. So you're going to click it on. And it's LMDE7 GG or Gigi. GG. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And it's based on Debian 13 and it just came out the other day. Okay. And it only comes with the Cinnamon desktop. You can click on this to uh, read the release notes. But I'm just going to click on download. And then I'm going to go down. It doesn't download it right away. <laughs> I'm going to select a mirror. And I'm going to select this mirror, Canada, Water University of Waterloo Computer Science Club. This is a university that's about 100 kilometers away from where I live. So I'm going to click it on. And it's going to download it. And it's a good idea to down always download, I think, from a university mirror. So it says it's going to take about a minute and a half. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go back up. And I'm going to download these two texts here. So now I'm not going to click this on because if you click it on, it's just going to do that. Okay. So I'm going to backspace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it. I'm going to save link as, and I'm going to save it. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for this second file. I'm going to right click it, save link as, and I'm going to save it. And now I'm just going to check here. My ISO is almost downloaded. While we're doing that, I'm just going to go to another web page. I'm going to type in Rufus Download. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I always do this. I forget to turn my face back on. Whenever I turn my face off to show something, I forget to turn it back on. Ugh. I have one in the Microsoft Store, and I have one here. You know what? I'm just going to download this one. And... Oh, they have a new version of it. It just came out um, two weeks ago. That's good. So I'm going to click it on, and we're going to download that. So we're going to use Rufus to create a bootable thumb drive or a USB drive that has Linux Mint on it. Okay, and it's already downloaded. Let's click this on. So we can see um, my ISO is finished downloading. It's 2.8 gigabytes. So I'm going to go back to my file manager. And I'm going to go into the C drive, and I'm going to go down here to C, down, right down into the C drive. I'm going to right-click here. I'm going to click on New Folder. 
and I'm just going to call it Linux Mint. Okay. And I'm going to go back to downloads, my downloads folder, and I'm going to click on the ISO, which is 2.8 gigabytes, the SHA GPG file, and the SHA 256 sum text. So these three files, and I'm not going to copy them, I'm going to cut them. Okay, so I'm going to cut, and I'm going to go back to the C drive, and I'm going to click on Linux Mint folder, and I'm going to paste them in. I'm going to paste them in, and there they are. Then I'm going to go back to uh, Firefox, and I'm going to close the roughest tab. And here, so we right now we, we downloaded the ISO from the University uh, Mirror. And we downloaded this text and this text. And when you download these ones, remember you're going to right click and save the file. So now we have these two texts and the ISO all saved in a folder called Linux Mint. Now I'm going to click on verify. And we're going to verify the ISO. And you could read this. And we're going to verify two things on the ISO. Number one, we're going to verify that it downloaded with its full integrity with no trouble. And we're going to verify that the ISO is signed by the developers. So I'm going to scan down right to here. If you see, it says here, if you're using Windows, follow the tutorial how to verify the ISO image on Windows. So I'm going to click this. And you know what? I'm going to make this larger. And we're going to go to another website and download this file here. I'm going to scan up. And I'm going to click this on. And I'm going to scan down. I'm going to click on this one. And it's downloading it. And I'm going to go back to uh, my folder here. I'm going to go to Downloads. And here it is here. And I'm going to install it. I'm going to say Yes. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say Next. Next. Install. And we're installing this program. And if I remember correctly, I don't have to reboot. And it looks like it's finished. Oh, it's finished. Next. And it's finished. And I don't need to read me. So let's close it and go back to my web browser. I'm going to scan down. Now I'm going to go back to uh, my uh, folder. And I'm going to go back to the C drive down to C. And I'm going to go into my Linux Mint folder. I'm not going to open the folder. I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the shift button down and right click it. Okay. So I'm not opening the folder that, that has the three files in it. I'm just going over, I'm just clicking on the folder, but I'm not opening it or going into it. I'm going to hold my shift button down. While holding the shift button down, I'm going to right click my mouse. And then it says open PowerShell window here. So I'm going to click it on. And now we have the PowerShell open. And I'm just going to make this larger. And so we've opened a Power, PowerShell, which is kind of similar to a Linux terminal. And we can see we're in the correct folder. We're in the C drive and the Linux Mint folder. Now I'm going to LS it. And you can see we have the three files in there. We have the I, Linux Mint LMDE7 Cinnamon. It's the Linux Mint ISO. And we have the two texts here. Now we're going to go back to our web browser. I'm going to select that file. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to uh, my PowerShell. And I'm going to insert it in. And then I'm going to backspace. Well, I'm not backspacing. I'm using my arrow. And I'm going to stop at the uh, period there. I'm going to backspace. I'm going to type in LMDE. And I'm going to tab it. And my tab is not working. Let's do dash 7. Mm. Let's do OK. Let's. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy this. Okay. Oop. I'm going to copy. And insert. So let's see if this works. Let's hit enter. And it's going to take a moment. And there. It says the command was successful. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in notepad shot 256 sum text and it just opened up notepad <laughs> that's what i did is i opened up that file and i opened up this file here this file i opened up in notepad 
I'm going to go to Notepad, and I'm going to make it larger, and let's make it larger too. Now we don't need all these commit these lines in here, and the very bottom line is the one we need because we downloaded LMD E7, not four, five, or six. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these lines because we don't need them, and I'm going to go here. Now I'm going to go back to uh, my PowerShell, and I'm going to copy this line. And hopefully it's the same. Okay, I copied it. And we're going to compare the lines. So we can see it's the same just by looking quickly. Now, if you want to take your time and do it slower, it's even better. But we can see the number is exactly the same. So this number here that's highlighted, this was pulled off the ISO that we downloaded from the University Mirror in Canada. So like I said, this bottom number was pulled off the ISO that we downloaded from the University Mirror in Canada. The top number is from the text file that we downloaded from the official Linux Mint website. So the top number came from the Linux Mint website. The bottom number came from the, the ISO that was downloaded from the University Mirror and they match up. So we're halfway there as far as verifying the ISO. And what it means is that the, air, the ISO was downloaded with its full integrity and there was no problems. Now we need to verify the signature. I'm just going to save this file. You don't have to save it. I'm going to save it. So now I'm going to clear the screen and I'm going to go back to the website. So now we need to do the authenticity check. I'm going to select this one and I'm going to copy it and go back to my PowerShell and I'm going to insert it in and I'm going to hit enter. And we're just going to wait a minute and it downloaded the public key. I'm going to go back to uh, here and it's telling you if this one fails, you could use this one or this one, but this one worked. Now I'm going to go down. So now I'm going to go down to this line and I'm going to select all. And I'm going to copy the line, copy. And I'm going to go back to PowerShell. And I'm going to insert it in, and I'm going to hit enter. And that's not good. It shouldn't say bad signature. <laughs> hmm. Now what I'm going to do is um, go into here, and I don't know if I should have changed this file. So I'm just going to put here uh, test. Okay, and I'm going to download that other file again. Let's go back to uh, Linux Mint. And let's just download this again. I think I shouldn't have changed it. I'm going to save link as. And I'm just going to go to my C drive. I'm going to save it right into the Linux Mint folder. And I'm going to save it in. I'm going to go back to PowerShell. And I'm going to run this command again. And, oh, okay, I shouldn't have changed that file. <laughs> okay, so, so let's clear the screen. And let's run the command. And it says it's a good signature. From Linux Mint ISO signing key. Now notice here it says unknown and here it says warning this key is not certified with a trusted signature. There is no indication that the signature belongs to the owner but it does say good signature. So we're going to go back to Linux Mint website. We're going to go back to verify. So it's going to tell you right here they're telling you this is the signature. They're telling you it's going to say unknown Linux Mint signing key at root and then if we go down and then it's going to tell you, note, GPG might warn you that Linux Mint signature is not trusted by your computer. This is expected and perfectly normal. Okay, and if you go up here, like I said, it's going to say unknown signature. If we go back to our PowerShell, we see here it has a good signature from Linux Mint ISO. It says un root Linux Mint unknown, and there's a warning. But it's okay. So what it's done is it's taken this signature and it's pulled it off the ISO that we downloaded from the University Mirror, and it's comparing it to the text. Now you can manually compare it, and you could do this. Let's go back here, and this is the signature here from the official Linux Mint website. Let's just copy it. Let's copy it. Let's paste it in our PowerShell. Let's just move the cur cursor over. Let's insert it in. Oh, we're off. So let's go like this. So we can see these two lines are exactly the same. 
So the bottom line was copied from the official Linux Mint website, and the second last line was pulled off the ISO that we downloaded from the University Mirror, and they're the same. Now let's go back to the website, and let's just go back to the top of this page. Oops. So you probably want to read this, verify your ISO. Uh, a lot of people that install the various types of Linux, a lot of people, probably most people do not verify the ISO. And a lot of Linux YouTubers who teach you how to install Linux don't show you how to verify the ISO. So there's two steps in verifying the ISO. You want to verify to make sure that it was downloaded with its full integrity, with no trouble, no problems. And you want to verify the signature that it was signed by the developers. And it tells you that here. So you should probably read this paragraph because it's just going to tell you what I explained. So now our ISO is verified. We know that it was downloaded with its full integrity. And we know that it was signed by the Linux Mint developers. Now we're ready to make a USB stick. Now we already downloaded Rufus. At the beginning of this video, I showed you how to download Rufus. We're going to use Rufus to make a bootable thumb drive or USB drive that has Linux Mint on it. So you can install it on your real bare metal computer. I'm going to close my web browser and I'm going to close my PowerShell. And I'm going to go to downloads and I'm going to click on this Rufus. Let's click it on. Oh. I better get a thumb drive, right? Okay, so I have a uh, 32 gig thumb drive. We don't really need a 32 gig one, but here's my thumb drive. So I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, so my thumb drive is plugged in. And now that I've opened up Rufus, I'm gonna say yes. And do you want Rufus to check the application for updates online? I'm just gonna say no for now. And here we are. And right here on the pull down menu, you can see it's a 32 gig drive and boot selection. I'm just gonna click this on. But it actually was right there, disk or ISO image, please select. So I'm going to hit select right over here. And I'm going to go to my C drive. I'm going to click on Linux Mint. And I'm going to click on my ISO. I'm going to open it. And I'm going to start. I'm going to click on start. And it's warning me that whatever is on that thumb drive is going to be erased. So I'm going to say OK. And there's two ones you can click on. But I'm clicking on the one that's recommended. So I'm going to say OK. And it's warning me again, and I'm going to say yes. And it's warning me again, I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to click OK. Another warning. <laughs> it gives you a lot of warnings. And it's copying the ISO over. And when this is finished, we're going to have a thumb drive with Linux Mint Debian LMDE7 that we can use to install Linux Mint on a real bare metal computer. So it's copying it right now. So I'm going to pause the video and come back. So don't go away. I'll be back. Okay, it finished. That only took about, I don't know, uh, <laughs> two minutes, two and a half minutes. So I'm going to close it and I'm just going to go here. This, this is pretty small. Can I move this over? So here we are in my E. You can see I have E as my thumb drive. My thumb drive is E. Okay. And you can see I have LMDE7, Linux Mint. So all I have to do now is eject the, th the thumb drive. Let's eject it. So it's ejected. And all I have to do is plug it into a computer and boot onto it and install Linux Mint LMDE7. And that's it. In this video, I showed you how to download Linux Mint ISO in Windows, how to verify it in Windows, and how to copy it onto a USB thumb drive, a bootable USB thumb drive in Windows, so you can use it to install Linux Mint in your computer. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.